Woman Jekka! We are on Wurundjeri land. It is Warren season. The one that's at Adam Burrows. There is fungi by the creek. People talk to this land without asking. We give our respect to the Aboriginal people whose dreaming made this country. We are listening to the stories. Let's work together for a shared future. Hello everyone and welcome to worship here in this sacred space. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, if you're in your pyjamas, drinking a cup of tea, or maybe fully dressed with a hat on to go to church, you are welcome in this space. Great uh, swathes of our country are currently in lockdown and we here in Melbourne are also locked down but our hearts are open. And today we're going to hear a story of a man walking on water and a man sitting in front of a bulldozer, a story of what it means to be a living sign of God. We come together to meet the holy in the common and the curious, in the salt and the dough and the bread and the coins, ordinary things. In lost lambs and foolish sons, lights in lanterns and boats on waves. We come here to meet the holy, the holy in you and the holy in me, the precious holy one, two, three. In all that is and all that will be in story and song in the way that is long. Stretching, guiding, inspiring on this day, this day and all days, we come together to meet the holy. John 6, 1 to 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. 
Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Philip answered, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in this place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the steep sea of Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. But they had rowed about three or four miles when they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sign from the 12th century, meaning a mark, meaning a symbol, meaning a proof, meaning a military standard, meaning an omen, meaning a sign in the heavens, meaning a constellation. In today's story, the people are looking for a sign, a sign that Jesus is the one to follow. They're looking for a miracle, miracle from the mid 12th century, a wondrous work of God from the old church Slavonic shmego, meaning to laugh or to smile. They are looking for a miracle and Jesus, well, he gives them three. There's the feeding of the 5,000, there's the walking on the water, and there's the calming of the waves that carries their wee boat safe to shore. Are you looking for a sign? Are you looking for a miracle? I mean, signs are easier, yeah? Easier to say yes to. So sometimes we're looking for signs how to get from A to B. And sometimes we're looking for signs metaphorically, a sign to say yes or a sign to say no, a sign that the gods are with us wherever we go. And every day the earth gives to us her signs every single day. And we can choose to ignore them. <laughs> Gosh, it's getting hot in here. Or we can choose to read them. We can read the signs. We are all looking for signs, perhaps, and even for miracles. The hungry 500, 5,000, depending on which version of the story you're reading, they certainly were. So what about you? Do you pay attention to the synchronicities that demand of us that we put down the weight of our aloneness, as the poet David White would say, that we put down the weight of our aloneness because all the birds and all the creatures of the earth are unutterably themselves. And everything is waiting for you. It's just waiting for you to read the signs. Or do you not? Actually, 
No, don't pay attention. No, don't see the man walking on the water or the woman sitting in a tree. More of that later. Oh, would that we could wake up, my friends. Would that we would wake up, as the poet Murray Howe would say, to what we once were. When we were ocean and before that, when, when sky was earth and animal was energy and space was not just nothing. And we were not so lonely because we knew that we were part of something, you and I together, part of something so much bigger and greater than this tiny self. I put the word um, sign into Google. I typed it in just to see what would come up. And the most common searches, the top 10 or so included, signs of COVID, signs of depression, signs of pregnancy, signs of spring, and signs of hope. I type in the word Tarkine, remember the woman in the gum because it's been on my mind, this old growth forest of ancient trees and of miners and protesters down on their knees who've been begging that we all just see the signs, people. It's killing the forest. It won't just be fine. There is a line, yeah, a moral line, a heart line, a front line. And it's about to be crossed on your watch and mine. If we tear down this tar kind, so much will be lost. So I typed in tar kind and sign and I see the words destruction and I see the word hope. And I think of Jesus going out on that boat and walking with all his melancholy madness across that stormy sea. A sign for the disciples and for you and for me that all of us, we can do amazing things. If we just quell our fears, we can walk on open waters. We can save this forest for our sons and our daughters. And in news just in... According to The Guardian, MMG, a majority Chinese-owned minerals company, has applied to build a tailings waste storage facility and pipeline infrastructure in the ancient Tarkine in Tasmania. So 77-year-old Fritz Harmsen, what did he do? What did Fritz do? Well, he planted a camping chair in front of trucks on an unsealed road and he sat down. We are trying to protect it with all our might. When will MMG get a message to stop destroying this beautiful track? of forest. On behalf of my children and grandchildren, I want to protect the fast diminishing temperate rainforests around the world, this one being one of the nicest. The long term damage that it will do is that we will lose um, a, a forest that is, as it stands, more beneficial to mankind, uh, where we can take our children and uh, commune, commune with nature. Once that goes, then help us out. These forests mean to me, I mean life. And these forests take hundreds of years to grow and in seconds they can be destroyed and um, once they're destroyed we can't ever get them back especially not in my generation and for generations to come and so we need to start thinking about the future 
I have five nieces. I'm here for them. I'm here for their children. When is MMG going to get the message? We are here to stay to protect these forests. And the community obviously is against the onslaught as well. With Susan Lay, our Minister for the Environment, as a Minister for the Environment, she should also take notice and help protect our forests in Tasmania. We're calling for people to come down and help. We need as many people to come down and help as possible to keep this blockade going. It's very important. If you have the time, please come down or up. You'll be looked after and you'll be doing something that's really important. Hamzen, a former French horn player of all things with the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra, was part of a small band of Bob Brown endorsed protesters who have been holding the line in the Tarkine, the heart line, the front line for weeks. Hamzen said, I am here today because nothing else seems to be working. I just feel that we've lost our moral compass. We've lost our moral compass as a developed nation, particularly now. We have to do what we can to protect what is left of nature. It's too important to make this into a waste dump, which is basically what a tailings dam is. More than 60 protesters have been arrested in this forest in the last few weeks for attempting to stop work on this dam. People have been climbing trees, really, really big trees. They've been sleeping in sleet and camping in mud and freezing through storms. And all this while, what? What? All this while the world, it's rolled on. We, we have rolled on, on the mainland of this ancient country, maybe paying a wee bit of attention every now and again. I mean, look, let's be, let's be honest, there's been a lot going on. We can't pay attention to everything, or maybe not, actually. Maybe we haven't even known about it. And all this while, people, good people, have become living miracles. They have become living signs of justice. And then, last week, you want the good news? I'll give you the good news. Last week, this happened. MMG has stopped work on the site after receiving a legal threat from conservationists. The Bob Brown Foundation and Greens MPs have demanded that the company stops their work until the environmental damage assessment is complete, which legally, let's not even talk about morals here, legally they are required to do and they know that they're in the wrong and they know that it doesn't add up so they've stopped, which doesn't mean that the battle is over. It doesn't mean that the war is won, but it does mean... It does mean at this moment anyway, this moment right now, that the orange-bellied parrot and the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle and the Tasmanian devil and the little swift parrot and this really big, quite terrifying-looking freshwater lobster thing, all of whom are endangered, it does mean that today, tonight... Tomorrow they are safe. Things like pandemics, they can make us feel like we've lost our way, like we need a sign that we're all alone, that we have no, no chance, no choice, no authority or autonomy, and also that we have no way of being part of the action of love in the world because we have to stay inside, right? What can I possibly do? The story of the feeding of the 5,000 from a simple socialist perspective show that if good people get together and share what they have, resources, food, passion, political activism, then there can be enough for everyone. 
The story of walking on water shows us from a simple metaphorical perspective that there are miracles. Hello, wedge-tailed eagle. All around us. If only we knew where to look. The story of Jesus giving us a sign of being the sign and then later on filling us with exactly the same spirit, the holy burning spirit of Pentecost that dances within him. When Jesus gives us this, he is saying to us, you know what? You've got this. You are filled with everything that you need and the earth is waiting for you. You too can become a living sign, which is exactly what Fritz decided to do, become a sign. Now, he was a stop sign, but he was also a yes sign, a yes to beauty and survival and small rats and large lobsters, a yes He became a living sign sitting on a road and he stopped a massacre from taking place. Look, this battle, this battle for the Tarkine, it's ongoing. And it needs your help. It needs your help. So from your freedom or from your lockdown, from your lounge room, or from wherever you are, I'm calling on you, my friends. Let's save this forest for our children and their children and all the children to come, and not just the human ones, this day and all days. Amen. This is a song that I wrote last year in lockdown. And it is not about me, but I wrote it about mental health and lockdown. And the story today is about boats and water and about being brave. And this is what that song is about.
For the first time in all of time, men have seen the Earth. Seen it not as continents or oceans from the little distance of a hundred miles or two or three, but seen it from the depths of space, seen it whole and round and beautiful and small, and seeing it so, what came to their minds was the life on that little lonely floating planet, that tiny raft in the enormous empty night. as it truly is, small and blue and beautiful in that eternal silence where it floats, is to see ourselves as riders on the earth together. Hi, your picture, Guali Houston. This is phenomenal. We are now approaching uh, lunar sunrise, and from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. O oh God, we recall Paul's words that your eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things you have made. We thank you that this has become true for us in different ways and at different times. In the view from a mountaintop, the crashing of the waves at the seaside, the colours of a sunrise or sunset, the trees of a forest or the flowers in a garden. But we thank you too for the people in our community who have reminded us of your concern for creation and who try to live sustainably and limit their ecological footprint. And we recall the words about Jesus. He saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them. We thank you, God, for people in our community who, like Jesus, have compassion for people. Those who take casseroles and cupcakes to people who are struggling. Those who buy a few extra groceries in their week shopping for asylum seekers. Those whose chats in the street or over the fence remind neighbours that they matter. Those who accept people whose lifestyles are different because of religion, race or gender and don't regard them as people to be feared. Those who care for family and friends with physical and mental frailties. Those who pick up the phone and call people to let them know they are not forgotten. Those who take the kids off the hands of harassed parents the handy people and lawnmowers who do it for their neighbours. We just thank you, God, for other people who can be signs of your compassion for people without any thought of whether or not the recipients deserve it. But we would pray for your strength to sustain them so that they do not become weary in well-doing. Amen.
We're here in Shekinah with Bob Brown Foundation staff and volunteers to celebrate the fact that yesterday MMG announced that they're withdrawing from the Shekinah rainforests. After eight weeks of relentless uh, protest action from an incredible band of forest defenders, uh, they finally decided to withdraw their machines from the forests, which we're really pleased about. We're here to make sure they go, uh, wave them farewell and tell them not to come back. Uh, if they do come back, we'll be here to make sure they know they're not wanted in these forests. Ah, oh, my beautiful lockdown companions and people in other places and spaces who perhaps have more freedom than we do right now. In this moment, a blessing. A blessing of the god of the wedge-tailed eagle and the small parrot with the orange belly. A blessing of the protester sitting high in a tree and the old man on a road. A blessing of the God who walks across water to show us that we are loved. May you know how deeply you are connected to all these stories that we have shared today. And may you go forth, even if it is just to your kitchen, to be still for a moment and to pay attention to the glory that is all around us, this day and all days. Amen.